Episode 19, Evidence 7, 8, and 9. 各位观众，大家好。Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Ironclad Irrefutable Evidence Series. Please don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this program. This is a critical issue related to the well-being and security of each individual, every community, and the entire society. Thank you very much for your attention and support. As stated in previous episodes, we suspect organs were being sourced from a massive, illicit living organ pool that exists in China. Now we have nine major pieces of information to establish the truth. So far, we have talked about six of them. In today's program, I will present the remaining three. Evidence seven: mass blood testing of Falun Gong practitioners. Nearly all detained Falun Gong practitioners have been forced to have their blood tested without being given any reason and the results of the test. Since 2014, public security bureaus, police stations, and neighborhood committees in various places have used intimidation, deception, and force to take blood samples from all Falun Gong practitioners. We believe that the purpose of testing is to expand its enormous organ transplant database. Evidence eight: Annie, Peter, and a military doctor exposed organ harvesting death camps. On March ninth, two thousand six, a woman named Annie and a Chinese journalist called Peter told the Epic Times that there was a secret concentration camp for Falun Gong practitioners in Sujatun, Shenyang. This was the first time the international community heard about the CCP's large-scale live organ harvesting from Falun Gong practitioners. Annie testified that the Shujatun concentration camp was set up the Liaoning Provincial Thrombosis Hospital of Integrated Chinese and Western Medicine in Shujatun, and that her ex-husband, a brain surgeon, personally removed the corneas of about 2,000 Falun Gong practitioners between 2001 and 2003. She said the internal organs of these practitioners were subsequently removed by other surgeons while the victims were alive and conscious. Currently, no one escapes alive. The majority of the approximately 6,000 Falun Gong practitioners died after kidney, cornea, and skin harvesting, and their remains were destroyed. There were still around 2,000 people remaining there before we left China. A senior military doctor from the logistics department of the Shenyang Military Region reached out to the Epic Times to expose live organ harvesting. He confirmed the existence of the underground concentration camp in Sujatun. On March 31st, 2006, the doctor said, "In the underground concentration camp of Sujatun, more than 10,000 people were detained in early 2005, but now the number of detainees is maintained at between 600 and 750, since many have been transferred or killed. At present, even if you enter the Sujatun area to investigate." You wouldn't find any evidence because it is too easy to transfer several thousand people, and it takes only one day to transfer five thousand people via the container trains. I witnessed a transfer from Tianjin to Jilin by a special train loading over seven thousand people, guarded by fully armed soldiers at night. All of the detained people were handcuffed to the top handrail like whole chickens in the oven before cooking. Sujatun is just one of 36 similar concentration camps across the country. According to the information I have come across, the largest Falun Gong practitioner internment camp in China is in Jilin, coded 672-S, and has more than 120,000 people detained there. There are over 14,000 people in China's fifth largest Falun Gong detention center in Zhou Tai, Jilin alone. The senior military doctor also exposed the CCP's special policy for felons, a document issued by the Central Military Commission of the Chinese Communist Party in 1962, and still in effect to this day, specifies that the bodies of death row prisoners and felony criminals can be processed in a revolutionary way for the developmental needs of the state and of socialism. During the Cultural Revolution, the primary revolutionary way to process these prisoners was to eat their bodies. The second way was to use them as slave labor for various production lines. According to the Supplemental Provisions issued in 1984, procuring organs from felony criminals was legitimate. Many local public security bureaus and justice departments work together to traffic prisoners' organs. 
Sometimes they wound criminals in fake executions and then immediately harvest organs from the injured prisoners. Since 1992, due to the development of many industries, the human body, dead or alive, has become an expensive industrial raw material. The CCP's policy about Falun Gong. At present, the CCP Central Committee has agreed to classify Falun Gong practitioners as class enemies and to treat them in any way that meets the needs of economic development without reporting to the upper levels of authority. That is, Falun Gong practitioners, like felons in China, are no longer treated as human beings but as raw materials and commodities. In the eyes of the CCP, Falun Gong practitioners who believe in truthfulness, compassion, forbearance have become class enemies that need to be physically annihilated. This is how the CCP defines death row inmates. Evidence 9. The use of underground air defense facilities to establish secret concentration camps. Despite the persecution of Falun Gong in China, practitioners there continue to expose the truth about the practice and the evil nature of the CCP to the Chinese people. And the CCP continues to arrest practitioners. According to public information, as of 2006, the CCP had 670 prisons and 300 labor camps and detained a total of approximately 1.8 million people. At that time, prisons were overcrowded due to the large number of Falun Gong practitioners being detained there. To accommodate the rapidly growing prison population, the Chinese government used underground air defense facilities to establish secret concentration camps across the country. This made the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners more cruel and covert. On October 1, 2000, Agence France Presse reported that the CCP had built new concentration camps in northern China specifically for detaining Falun Gong practitioners. Each concentration camp could hold 50,000 people. What was presented demonstrates that in China, after 1999, the wait times for organ transplants have become extremely short. The number of emergency transplants has become unusually high. Doctors have so many transplants to do that at times they conduct multiple operations in a single day. Sometimes one operation has multiple living persons on standby as backup donors. It isn't uncommon for organ transplants to have a warm ischemia time of zero. And strange phenomena, like free organ transplant promotions, have even appeared. Due to the difficulty of matching donors with recipients and a wide array of other factors, phenomena like this aren't normal in the transplant industry. In order for them to occur, a massive living human organ bank from which organs can be harvested on demand would have to exist. When we view this in the light of the insider testimonies regarding large-scale organ harvesting death camps we heard about today, we can draw the following conclusions. A huge living human organ bank emerged in China after 1999. It consists of facilities similar to Nazi concentration camps where Falun Gong practitioners are detained and selected for organ harvesting. How does the CCP respond to these allegations? When confronted with questions about the phenomena we've been discussing, Dr. Huang Jiafu, a spokesperson of the CCP's medical system, either avoids answering them, categorically denies the existence of these phenomena, claims they use organs from executed prisoners, or switches the topic to the organ harvesting in black market. Additionally, since 2010, the CCP has been encouraging Chinese people to embrace donating their organs. This campaign has bolstered the illusion of legitimacy surrounding the regime's organ transplant industry. However, what is the actual situation? Please continue to watch Episode 20. It is misleading that organs are from executed prisoners. In particular, please note that this is a worldwide unrestricted war without gunpowder. The CCP's crime of live organ harvesting from Falun Gong practitioners not only continues, but has spread throughout society. For example, in 2013, a six-year-old child, Little Bean Bean, in Shanxi, went missing. Two days later, he was found with his eyes gouged out for his cornea. Dozens of university students in Wuhan disappeared for no reason in recent years, and countless children and women go missing every year. 
live organ harvesting has become a threat to everyone. Perhaps, as we are talking, many kind and innocent people are being put onto operation tables for their organs, and also many have been detained in dark prisons for many years, and their hearts, livers, and kidneys are waiting to be excised in an indescribably cruel way at any moment. How urgently they need rescue from the outside world, how excruciating it is for their parents, brothers, and sisters to bear the pain of missing their loved ones for years. Live organ harvesting signifies an unprecedented atrocity that has never existed on this planet. We cannot heartlessly ignore the fact that the Chinese Communist Party is ravaging and killing people. We cannot watch the CCP flagrantly destroy the bottom line of morality with lies, coercion, and financial lures that aim to silence and lead the entire human race to fundamental destruction without taking action. We urge everyone to like, subscribe, and spread the word about our program. Let your family, relatives, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and anybody else in your social circle know the facts of the CCP's mass organ harvesting from living Falun Gong practitioners. Please tell the whole world the truth and stand together to put a stop to the CCP's crimes against humanity. This is a critical issue related to the well-being and security of each individual, every community, and our entire society. Thank you very much for your attention and support. World Organization to Investigate the Persecution of Falun Gong, WOIPFG, was founded on January 20th, 2003. It is based in New York with branches in Europe, Australia, Asia, and Canada. WOIPFG's mission is to investigate the criminal conduct of all institutions, organizations, and individuals involved in the persecution of Falun Gong. To bring such investigations, no matter how long it takes, no matter how far and deep we have to search, to full closure, to exercise fundamental principles of humanity, and to restore and uphold justice in society. The principle of our investigation holds that those who have committed crimes shall be brought to justice. Individuals shall bear the same responsibility for their involvement in their organization's crimes, and those instigating the persecution shall bear the same responsibility of those who have physically carried out the persecution. We intend to uproot state-sanctioned crimes and safeguard human morality. The criminal conduct of all individuals within organizations, units, and departments involved in the persecution will be thoroughly investigated and brought to justice.